well, what would you do if you heard that and the emergency broadcast system came on that there is a toxic chemical plume coming your way and you need to shelter in place? Do you have the supplies you need? Do you know how to use them? And do you have a plan? So let me give you a little background. Why am I thinking about that now? Well, I had watched a movie called Right at Your Door. It wasn't the greatest movie. I watched it on Amazon Prime, but it did make me think. In that movie, it was located in Los Angeles. Uh, terrorists had released a dirty bomb and residents in certain areas of Los Angeles were notified that a toxic chemical plume was coming their way and to immediately get inside and shelter in place. So I had to think, do I have the supplies and the plan to do that? And that's what made me make this video. Your shelter in place strategy is not just for terrorists releasing dirty bombs or toxic gases. It also can be for industrial accidents. I mean, look at what happened here. At Deer Park, Texas, there was a plant fire in March of this year causing the release of benzene and residents had to shelter in place for hours. In September 2017, residents in Curtis Bay, south of Baltimore, Maryland, had to shelter in place due to a leak of chlorosulfonic acid from a local chemical plant. How close do you live to a chemical plant? Well, I've included an interactive map in the links down below and you can click on it and it will tell you some of the chemical plants in your area. But you may have other industries in your area that are also releasing um, chemicals occasionally that are detrimental to your health and that might not be included on this map. The other thing, how close do you live to railroad tracks? Do you know what those trains on those tracks are carrying? Let me give you a couple examples. In November 2017, a train carrying molten sulfur derailed in Florida, causing a shelter-in-place warning. In December of 2012, a train derailed in New Jersey, releasing 23,000 gallons of toxic vinyl chloride gas. And I'm sure there's many other instances. I'm just pulling a couple. So again, that is a reason to shelter in place. Now, if you live in Hawaii, you also might get a warning to shelter in place because of volcanic ash. So in most of these instances, you really don't have that much warning. You have to have your supplies ready. You have to know how to use them. And you have to make sure that all members in your family know what the plan is and how to use those supplies. So let's discuss the steps needed. Well, the first thing you have to do is pick a room. What is going to be your room to shelter in place? You know, my first thought was my prep room downstairs, right? Because it's where I got all my food props and a lot of other props. And it's in the basement, no windows, perfect room, right? Well, it's perfect for a tornado maybe, but not perfect for this. If you're worried about toxic gases and chemicals, the higher the better. Because my understanding is I guess they're heavier and they lower into the ground. So on my main floor, I mainly have windows. I mean, one of the things they suggest is do it in your master bedroom and connecting master bath. Well, I mean, I have, I think, 11 foot windows in my master bedroom, a bay window in my master bathroom. I mean, it just won't work. In fact, on my main floor, I only have closets, pantry, and the guest bathroom that doesn't have a window. So I decided to pick the guest bathroom for that reason. Plus, if you had to be in there a little longer, at least you could use the facilities while you shelter in place. Here's the shelter in place steps that you should consider in your plan. And after this, we will go through the shelter in place supply kit. First, get all your family members inside and grab your pets from the outside or inside and put them in the designated room. They say if you have time, lock your doors and windows. That will give you a little bit tighter seal. So you're going to want to close all your fireplace dampers. So be sure to turn off your furnace and your fans and your air conditioner and anything that is circulating air. Your next step is to take out your plastic sheeting and your duct tape. And you're going to want to first seal your door, cover it with your plastic sheeting and then seal it with the duct tape and then you need to cover any window if you have one which I do not in this room. You're going to want to put plastic and duct tape around your light fixtures. 
Cover your electric outlets with plastic wrap and duct tape. Cover your light switches with plastic wrap and duct tape. Cover any air vents with plastic wrap and duct tape. Cover your pipes under the sink with plastic wrap and duct tape. So fill your sink with water, but this isn't to drink. And make sure your toilet has water and your sink and toilet has water in the drain traps. Not a bad idea to keep some bottled water at hand since you can't drink the water in the sink. Now stay in your secure area, listen to your radio. Until you hear, you no longer have to shelter in place. Well, if you remember during the Gulf War, they talked a lot about sheltering in place and having duct tape and plastic wrap ready to go just in case. And I kind of thought, hmm, does that really work? You know, are they just kind of trying to appease us? But I did find two studies where it does seem to be effective. There was the Oak Ridge test in the 1980s, and then in the mid-1990s, they did the Edgewood test. And these were single unit homes, and they left instructions on how you had to tape it and plastic wrap it and they wanted to see how effective it really was. Now, of course, they're not really having people in there uh, and testing them to see if they die or not from the gas, but this was about as realistic as they could make it. And they found out, surprisingly enough, that in one case, it was 90% effective from blocking uh, the noxious gas and chemicals from coming into the area that was taped off. Part of it depended on how well the people actually taped the room. Um, that seal is extremely, extremely important. Now in that movie I'm mentioning, they used any plastic they could get their hands on. They actually did the entire house. So they used trash bags, uh, bubble wrap they found, dry cleaners bags, uh, you name it, plastic wrap, whatever they could find. But in this case, what's usually re recommended is this, and that is plastic sheeting that is used as a vapor barrier, and you can find that in your building supply store. But it is also okay to use the heavy-duty plastic you know, drop cloths for painters. I'll show you what I got. This is the 2 mil plastic painter's drop cloth, and it's pretty thick, it's heavy-duty, and I think this would do the job. Okay, we'll go in the kit here. You can see, I have it easily identified. And on the flip side, I have a checklist of the supplies that need to be in here. It's always good to periodically check this, like somebody couldn't find the scissors, so they used them and didn't put it back. Always check and make sure your preps are what you think they are. Next is an instruction sheet. And it goes over what we're talking about in the video, the different steps, because hey, you might forget it or the family member might need a reminder. Um, it has a diagram that shows how to put up the plastic wrap. And one of the things when you put it up is you want to put the tape diagonally in all the corners and then tape it in the perimeter. And you want about four to six inches margin of plastic all the way around when you do it. But in the room we have, it reminds myself or a family member what we actually need to cover and it's always good to have instructions and these are laminated in case they get wet. Then something that of course is not necessary but here's some playing cards just a way to keep uh, active in case you have to be in there a couple hours. And this is a very minimal first aid kit. It just basically has adhesive bandages, some hand sanitizer, neosporin, things of that nature. Just a very minimal kit. Scissors, really important because you could cut all of your pieces to size and put them in this kit. But what happens if something's wrong with that room or you have to use another room, then you may not have enough plastic. So I think it's better just to cut when you actually have to put it up. But you need scissors for that. Duct tape. I don't think I need to say anything more. Um, the government has said that duct tape is the best type of tape to use for this, so I have two very thick rolls of it. And we have a solar hand crank radio. 
Just a minute, I'll take it out. Okay, so here's our little radio, and if we turn it on. Chance of rain. Lows in the mid 30s. Okay, so it's on the channel. Turn it off. And then at the end here, it's a flashlight. You should have a flashlight in your kit too. And this can charge by solar or it is hand crankable. Pretty cheap plastic crank, but hey, I think it would serve its purpose. And this way you can keep in touch and maybe if you don't have your cell phone or the cell phones aren't working, you can hear when you're able to leave your shelter in place. And then these are two of the heavy, it says extra heavy duty plastic drop cloths. And they are nine feet by 12 feet and these are two mil. So we have two of those. So in your shelter, you need your instructions, your duct tape, your painter's plastic drop cloth or plastic vapor barrier, scissors, radio, flashlight, and something to entertain yourself such as a deck of playing cards. One other thing I include in my supplies is a step stool. And I keep it in that bathroom closet so it's right ready to go. The step stool allows me to reach here. Otherwise, how could I put quickly up my plastic if I was by myself? Something to consider if you're short like me. Chances are you're never gonna have to use this shelter in place kit, but you know what? The supplies are inexpensive and you might already have them around your home. And why not put a little kit together and be ready just in case something happens. So this is Prepper Popori saying, please subscribe, share the knowledge and comment below. Do you have a shelter in place kit? What would you do in one of these emergencies?